what happens is when a pond gets to a certain level and it's all it's matured, the fish are happy, the ecosystem's thriving, you're not doing much with the pond anymore. The only thing left to do is let your imagination kind of run around in your backyard. What do you want to invest in something like that? And does it make sense to do that? <laughs> Hey, good morning, pod people. You got Chris Wilson behind the camera. Chris um, Wilson? Or Chris, <laughs> Chris Hansen. <laughs> you got Chris Hansen behind the camera and I'm driving. Two of us are headed to a consultation. These are one of my favorite types of consultations. This is actually for a past customer of ours. Fourth time doing a project in his backyard. He called me a few days ago and asked uh, if I could come out and uh, give him some ideas on sprucing up that waterfall. And I think what's funny is he sent me some pictures. What was surprising to me is I love it. Like I think it's actually a really, really nice pond. I'm excited to go out here because I understand what's going through this customer's mind and it's this. Ponds are addictive. What happens is when a pond gets to a certain level and it's all, it's matured, the fish are happy, the ecosystem's thriving, you're not doing much with the pond anymore. The only thing left to do is let your imagination kind of run around in your backyard. And I guarantee you, this is exactly what's happened with him. His pond is at a point where he can sit back, relax, um, look at the fish, watch the birds, and let his imagination just kind of run wild. And he's probably thinking, what else can I do with the waterfall? Can I make it a little taller? Can I make it a little wider? Um, what are the possibilities? And that's why we're going out to just figure out what are the possibilities. Let's go over to his house and we'll show you what he's got. So Brian, when, when you're on meetings like this, what's your approach? Obviously I want to listen to what uh, the homeowner has to say. He's the one who's been sitting back here thinking and dreaming up what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. um, and then really it's just a more of a facilitating some ideas, I guess, right? And, and um, some of those ideas might be possible, some of them might be impossible. Because of things like root flares off of trees, because of the natural slopes. You know, like one thing, um, if you wanted to get that waterfall higher, of course you can, but I really, I always worry about the volcanic look a waterfall can take in a relatively flat backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't really have a whole lot more space to get it up too much higher. Sure. And obviously at some point, um, budget is king. What do you want to invest in something like that? And does it make sense to do that? Hey, Greg, how are you, bud? Hey, Brian, how are you? Nice you to see you back here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Chris. How are you? Good. Great Good. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So tell me what you're thinking. Well, we were thinking Maybe a little bit more of the uh, waterfall. Okay. So yeah, that went about as planned. The one thing I would say is you never want to confuse a customer too much. I gave them a lot of options. You know, we talked about a waterfall from the, coming off the existing berm. Then we talked about a waterfall moving in closer. Then we talked about splitting the stream. And then it came all the way around and Chris had a great idea with adding the urn over on another side just to give them some vertical height. And then we talked about adding that spillway bowl on the side. But I think thinking out loud with the customer gets them thinking a little bit more about it too. You just never want to confuse them. So we summed everything up with, hey, what I would do if it were mine is this. And to me, adding the urn over on the back side and then doing the spillway bowl in the foreground is a perfect combination. It doesn't um, take away from his already gorgeous looking waterfall in the back. It's just um, adding to it and, and uh, putting it kind of a cherry on top of his already gorgeous looking water feature. So uh, we'll wait to hear back from them and, and hopefully we do this. It'd be so much fun to take you guys out there and do that rehab with us. Chris Hansen and I, that'd be number one and then number two, <laughs> are here. We're gonna put in a pondless waterfall. We're using six small aqua blocks, two to four pump, a little bit of a streamliner. And I'll show you kind of the, the setting that we get to work in. It is 9.30. What time do you think we'll get done? 2.30. Holy cow, optimistic. He's young and dumb. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing more like 4.30, but we'll see. We've got a couple of challenges. The challenge number one is that guy right there. <laughs> Second is, I don't know, you can see all these elevations. It's actually a pretty awesome design done by Rose Landscaping. And, uh, and the pretty 
fantastic backyard with all the walls, the terraces. He just finished all this stuff. Big terraces in the back, pool. This is the space we get to work in. It's approximately uh, 15 feet from here to there and probably about 15 feet from here to that back corner, kind of a triangle type shape. Um, obviously our biggest challenge is getting the stone back here. So everything's gonna have to be done by hand. Uh, we could come this way and up these stairs, which would stink. Uh, we'll probably come through that gate there, around through here, but then we've got some stairs and a very big uphill battle to come in through that area over there. You can see our truck is, uh, unloaded and we got some stone in the back there luckily it won't take that much stone i'm thinking we can do this whole project with about three and a half tons maybe two and a half tons of stone but we've got extra just in case all right so we got the aqua box laid out we're gonna do two wide three long so it's a total of six aqua blocks in here another challenge and i don't know if you can really tell from this angle but the soil is up about 12 inches higher than where our, ridge, where our grade needs to be. The height of this wall is where our grade needs to set. We want to set the top of our aqua blocks probably a good six inches, five inches lower than that. Mm -hmm. And this is already 12 inches higher than that. So we're going to have to dig down 12 inches before we dig down another 12 inches to get our aqua blocks in. So a lot of digging. And then we'll get a nice little waterfall coming from here. Coming in like so. Take this dirt, it'll come up here, create a, you know, about a nine inch berm. I don't want to come up too much higher than this. We'll probably have to even get some rocks back in here to retain some soil. But get a nice little berm to bring that waterfall down and through here. So first step, dig, dig, dig. <laughs> So we've got the reservoir in. Uh, you can see a couple rocks have gone in. What I did before this point is we've got those aqua blocks in. I folded that liner back on the left, the right, the back, and the front, and backfilled with a lot of our looser soil. On bigger reservoirs, we actually recommend using sand. Uh, sand will actually allow groundwater and stuff to kind of heave up through the sand rather than heaving up your big tank. But a smaller tank like this, I'm very comfortable with just using some of this really fine uh, topsoil. Works just fine. So now we're starting to build the waterfall. Um, you can see I've got some bigger rocks here. I got a frame rock on the on the left, a frame rock on the right, and uh, now we'll start working that waterfall out. This is the fun part. You know, the, the first part was basically digging a hole, throwing some plastic in there, wrapping it in rubber liner. Now the artistic stuff happens. Hey Chris. Hey. Final thoughts? It turned out really nice. We knocked out a pretty good waterfall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking such a small space and um, you know the, the big racks definitely, you know, pull off help mm -hmm. you pull off the you know much more dramatic waterfall, but you really um, capitalize on such a small space with high impact, right? Yeah. Hey, I'm back at that job that Chris and I were working at. It looks pretty awesome. Oh, look, you can't really see my face, but if I do that, over the top. Now you can see the sunburn that I got the other day, too. Hey, oh, geez. <laughs> Anyways, I'm back over here. It looks fantastic. This is definitely going to be one of those projects that uh, over time just gets better and better and better. And I think what I love about water features is it's one of those things that you can invest in that truly does appreciate over time. I'm going to turn this camera around, though, really quick and just kind of show you how awesome this thing is. We'll take a look at that nice big Japanese maple. We got some um, a bunch of ground covers and stuff, creeping Jenny, and some stone crop and stuff down here in the bottom. We got some Karen azaleas up there in the top. You go pine as all this stuff grows, it's just gonna look better and better. And I think again, you look at the look at the space that this takes up and what an impact it does. I mean, here's this incredible landscape, right? In ground swimming pool, all these awesome retaining walls, slide, nice fire pit, but the thing that brings it all to life, 100% this water feature.
and just super simple and cool. I love it. Thanks so much for joining us. We had fun and we hope you did. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like, comment, you know, all that stuff here, here, and there. <laughs>